A newly redrawn congressional map in New York is causing all sorts of drama on the Hill between incumbent Democrats as moderate Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney tries to essentially screw over the progressive in New York, Mondaire Jones. So the new map was drawn by a court appointed expert after the Democrats version was deemed unconstitutional by a New York state court. Now that version would have gained Democrats three additional congressional seats in the state of New York. But less than an hour after the new map became public, Maloney, the representative for New York's 18th district, who also happens to be the DCCC chair, announced that he would run in District 17, which is where Mondaire Jones currently serves. So he announced this on Twitter without giving anyone any notice saying, while the process to draw these maps without the legislature is against the will of voters, if the newly announced map are finalized, maps are finalized, I will run in New York 17th Congressional District. New York 17 includes my home and many of the Hudson Valley communities I currently represent. Now Maloney is the moderate here. And again, he's gonna be running in the district that's currently being representative by, represented by progressive Mondaire Jones. Now, this is all interesting considering that the DCCC says that it's all about protecting its incumbents, but that protection is usually only offered to corporate members of their party. Let's keep yeah. it real. So I'll go a little further. So first of all, let's just acknowledge that if they had passed the voting rights bill, none of this would be an issue. Okay, it would have ended gerrymandering completely. We would have had different districts and fair districts. But of course, as usual, the Democrats didn't pass anything they promised to pass. The voting rights bill didn't pass, so then we have this mess on our hands now. Where oh, they gerrymander and then the courts say you can't gerrymander, then they're gonna go back to redrawing the maps. It's a total debacle. But the biggest part of the story is the one that mainstream press is not exactly covering. So to be fair to them, they're covering the story fairly significantly because it's drama, it's a soap opera where Democrats are fighting one another. And by the way, that's part of why we tell progressives to fight their so-called colleagues, because the press loves that. But I want you to do it on issues that matter to the American people, $15 minimum wage, healthcare, etc. They almost never do that. Notice now, when it's their districts, all of a sudden, Everyone in Congress is animated about this. And, and even the progressive adjacent Congress people, not anywhere near the squad, they're coming out publicly against Maloney. I've never seen that. And because they're like, wait, if they do it to Bondaire Jones, but they might do it to me. All of a sudden, oh, it's about my ass. Now they weren't, none of them were anywhere near this animated on Build Back Better, mm -hmm. voting rights, any of the things that actually affected the voters. But when it comes to their power, all of a sudden they're all super upset, okay? So, but overall, I like that they're fighting back, including people in a broader section of the Democratic Party. That's a good phenomenon. Now, the part, so the press is covering all that and credit where credit is due. The part they're leaving out is they keep saying that Maloney is running in Mondaire Jones district because it's slightly safer, that it's, D plus 10 instead of D plus eight. That means the Democrats are favored by 10 instead of eight in that district. No, that's not why he's doing it. That's a minimal difference. That makes almost no difference at all. In fact, if he ran in the other district, the Democrats could keep that one, Mondaire Jones and Jamal Bowman. He's supposed to be the head of electing more Democrats and he's making it much harder by leaving his old district. Now a new Democrat has to come in there and that makes it harder to win that district. Okay, so why is he actually doing it? Because they want to squeeze progressives out. That this way, it's a power play. You go into Mondaire's seat, in a okay scenario, you squeeze out Mondaire. And Mondaire Jones has been a pretty good progressive and a pretty vocal progressive. That'd be, that'd be a nice win for Democratic leadership to take out a progressive. But a better scenario is you force Mondaire Jones to run in Jamal Bowman's district, which is right next door. And that way, you're hoping they take out Jamal Bowman who's even more progressive and a member of the squad. So, and, and they would love the idea of two progressives fighting each other. They salivate at that idea. Now, what's Maloney's job? And I mentioned there, DCCC. If you're not knee deep in politics, you might not know what that is. That's the, the group that is supposed to raise money from donors to reelect incumbents and elect new Democrats as well. Seems like there's a conflict of interest at play, Uger. Now, there's two <laughs> things, Anna. One is the conflict of interest, 
Maloney is the one gathering all the money, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So people are like, okay, wait, this is terrible because you're gonna have an unfair advantage against Mondaire Jones. But not only that, you're gonna have an unfair advantage because a lot of swing district, even like some, apparently even some moderate Democrats are pissed at this, but they can't speak out because Maloney controls the money. And so if they speak out, Maloney can punish them and say, even though you're in a close district, I'm not gonna give you the money because you didn't back me in my power play. Okay, by the way, Chantel Brown did the same exact thing in Cleveland. She was running the, the county party. She did it against Nina Turner. So this is an old uh, trick by corporate Democrats, okay? Now, but there's a second part of it, which is why is Maloney trying to squeeze out a progressive? Well, he's Democratic leadership, they hate progressives. By the way, progressive in Congress, when are you going to get it? They are not your colleagues. They are literally your opponents. They hate you. Yeah, I'm gonna get to a Maloney quote, which is unbelievable in a second. But it's possible that the donors who hate progressives even more, why, why do corporate Democrats hate us? Because they're corporate Democrats, they raise money from corporations. And corporations, multinational corporations despise progressives. So it's possible that the donors of the Democratic Party said, no, Maloney, you are to run against the progressive. We wanna take out as many progressives as possible. We'll eliminate Nina Turner and some of the others. Now use the money we're giving you to squeeze out either Mondaire Jones or Jamal Bowman. So, okay, so can I do the Maloney quote? Yeah, do it. Okay, the Maloney quote is maddening. So Mondaire Jones explained, uh, and he was very public about it. In, in, in Congress, it's so important for Democrats uh, in their etiquette to let you know ahead of time what you're gonna do, okay? And they're always talking about colleagues, colleagues, right? Maloney blindsided him. Okay, hit him with a two by four, and came out publicly, said, I'm running in that district, ha ha, okay, and didn't let Mondaire Jones know. So Jones was furious. Then Maloney responds this way He says, uh, From my point of view, uh, I'm just running where I landed, he said. Uh, if someone else is looking at the district as well, obviously, we'll, obviously we'll try to uh, try and work through that as colleagues and friends. Ultimately, <laughs> this is up to the voters, and that's what it should be. No, 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 no. After you backstab him and hit him with a two by four, you can't come back with colleagues and friends. But they think that progressives are dupes. And by the way, in Congress, I don't know, you're supposed to prove them wrong. He, for the entire time that the Justice Democrats have been in Congress, Democratic leadership has said, oh, colleagues, don't criticize co colleagues, friends, colleagues. By the way, behind the scenes, I know for a fact, they then say, if you ever, or actually fight for the things you believe in, we'll make sure that you don't get committee assignments. You can never introduce a bill. What happened to a colleague? What happened to a friend? Who says to a friend, I'll never let you introduce a bill? They're not your goddamn friends or colleagues. And even after he stabs Mondaire Jones in the back, he comes out and goes, Oh, come on, let's just settle this like colleagues and friends. So I have a question for you because the threats toward progressives, I think, are relevant and substantive, right? Because if you're a progressive that's prevented from being able to join committee assignments or introduce legislation. I mean, you're you have no power. You're not able to do anything. So how do progressives fight back? Like let's say they accept, they finally accept that these corporate democrats are not their friends. How do they effectively fight back knowing that it's very like the threats are real yeah. and they will implement what they're no, threatening. No, no, they won't actually. So here's oh, the funny part, okay? okay? So the fighting back is super easy. Honestly, so far, I don't know why they haven't figured it out. It's maddening. And again, I'm telling you, I'm not allowed to say who it is because it was said to me in confidence, but I know for a fact that those threats are issued. So here's how you fight back. You just make it public. You go, that guy right there mm. said, I'm not allowed to introduce bills. If I oppose his bill, then I just have an ideological difference with, right? You know what would happen? All the press would come out and be like, oh my God, it's a Democratic infighting, infighting. Everybody covered the story. They love that soap opera. And then people are like, wait, did they did he did you really threaten to not introduce his bills? And then what is that guy gonna do? Oh no, 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 no. I no, I didn't say that. I didn't say no, no, of course, Jamal. I mean I mean, look, it depends <laughs> on how the corporate press is gonna frame the story. That's a huge part of it as well. Yeah, of course it is. Right? But it that's when you say, hey brother, you are you gonna fight back or you're just gonna bow your head? Because fighting back is actually, you're gonna be shocked to find out how easy it is. Oh, the press will yell at me. Well, you could use press as well and you can make your point. I mean, Trump does it like for 
How buffoonish Trump is, you have to give him credit for how he mastered manipulating the media for his own advantage. Yeah, look here, I'm defending progressives 100%. It, Maloney does not belong in that seat. He has no business in that seat and he's totally screwing us over. Mondaire Jones is totally right, Jamal Bowman's totally right. But I've gotta tell progressives at the same time, we've now said this thousands of times and it is not getting through to them. They are not your colleagues. They will eliminate you the minute they get a chance. Politically, they can't wait to assassinate you. You think they're your friends or colleagues? You ought to have your head examined. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.